Hey guys, it's Channel Weird. I'm Clyde Lewis. It's uh, another sa- uh, Saturday, and we do air on Sunday now, from what I understand. So we're going to be doing it Saturday and Sunday now, which is nice. Uh, I have a really, really remarkable guest today. Um, I just got a message. I'm sorry about that. I got a message. It was kind of an interesting one. Anyway, uh, William Lawrence is with us today. And one of the things about William uh, that's interesting is he, he's a guy who uh, certainly is uh, an investigator, a scientist, someone who is uh, looking into things that I'm truly interested in. And a while back on my radio show, Ground Zero, I did a uh, a long segment about what is known as quantum immortality. And it's a, a new scientific study. And, and more and more science is uh, trying to grasp what, what used to be called magic. Remember, they always say that uh, don't let science fool you into thinking it's magic. Well, Everything's magical until science gets a hold of it and turns it into, you know, uh, a science or they, they they get down to the bottom of, of why we are, where we are going and what is happening with the world. And a lot of that has to do with something called quantum entanglement. Now, Einstein had said that uh, quantum entanglement is spooky actions at a distance. And it all boils down to dimensions, uh, string theories. Uh, gosh, I could go down the list of everything that, uh, you know, multiverses. Uh, just the idea that consciousness goes beyond this earthly this earthly existence. It goes beyond the flesh and blood that we are, and uh, it, it you know sure religion sometimes satisfies that with people because you have faith that when you die you're going to go uh, to either heaven or hell. But I don't like that 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 uh, finite nature. I always thought that it, if we were to die or we were to pass on, it would be infinite, just like this entire. Uh, galaxy, this entire universe. So William Lawrence is with us. He's a scientist investigating new methods of communication with life after life. He's developed a a new device to uh, demodulate the electromagnetic spectrum of sunlight. He discovered that ghosts were able to show themselves in light, and later he went on to discover that it wasn't just spirits appearing, but what appears to be extraterrestrial life. William Lawrence, welcome to Channel Weird. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. I appreciate you having me on to discuss this information today. So. Is it extraterrestrial life that you're discovering, or would it be considered ultra-terrestrial life? Meaning that uh, if, if you're going after the ghosts and you wind up finding living beings, I mean, wouldn't that be a dimensional thing, or or would it be uh, something from somewhere out there? At this point, I honestly have no clue as to where or who I'm communicating with. In the beginning, I designed the experiment to communicate with ghosts, and in doing so, I discovered messages that appear to be from other civilizations. There was humans physical like us, there were non-physical spirits like ghosts, and there was an advanced form of reptiles. So there was three different species that I discovered. And in doing so, I just, as far as how they're messaging, they're using the photons, they're using quantum entanglement, but as to their location, that is a mystery at this time. We were, uh, I mean, you say you have a device. What is this device you use? Uh, The device is very simple. It's just um, I'm using basic tools, and I made this discovery seven years ago. So what I created was an optical experiment. It's like uh, an observation technique where I take incoming light from the sun. I pass that light and process it in water. The water has been proven to store information. In one droplet of water, you could store over a 1,000 full-length movies. So we're looking at over a thousand gigabytes in a droplet of water. So I, I use about an inch of water in a water bottle. Now the bottle is very important too because of the bottom of the bottle is concaved and plastic has a very high scattering of light. So the plastic is actually scattering the photons. The memory in the water is actually processing the information and I then project the light from the water out the lens and onto a black piece of steel where I digitally take photographs of the light on the steel. It is on the steel where these objects are starting to appear, where I'm able to capture these unexplained quantum anomalies. It's interesting because I think I've seen your uh, your work and it's very compelling what we, I mean, it's like you've opened uh, a channel where you actually see movement and you see worlds within worlds. And it makes a lot of sense because, you know, you look at something like basalt or crystal, and they've always said that crystal holds uh, a lot of memory as well. And that uh, crystal, of course, uh, carries a lot of power with it. Well, water is a conductor of electricity or 
also it, it it's a it's a light refractor and so using water to try and uh, open up light frequencies i think is a very ingenious plan but it's also been around us since the beginning of time every time there's a rainbow every time you see a rainbow that's that's water and it's scattering in the air and it's showing all the colors the reds the yellows the greens you know and, and so this is a natural phenomenon but what i've done has been able to control it and focus it so in order to find a focal point that was probably where i lucked out the most by having the right observational technique to focus on this frequency and be able to extract information from the visible light spectrum have you demonstrated this in front of an audience i have had witnesses during my experiment with me as far as in front of an audience no uh, i've been spending the last three years in research and development and what i'm trying to do is communicate the results of the experiment which was a four-year process all the results and then in communicating the results i'm trying to get an investigation so as of right now it's been almost eight years and there has not been one scientific investigation of my discovery do you really think that maybe there's a connection between i guess you could call it the paranormal world where we're dealing with ghosts or spirits or apparitions and extraterrestrial or ultra terrestrial i mean is there a, com a connection here that we are uh you know that we are trying to make or are they separate because i always tell people i like to separate my peas from my potatoes when i'm sitting there and eating my meal and just the idea of mixing the i guess you could call it the spiritual or the paranormal world with something that would be as nuts and bolts as extraterrestrial for me i have a hard time dealing with that what is your idea what is your thought i do not think that you could have religion without some type of extraterrestrial activity so it's all connected since the beginning of time and what it is is there's over 4600 religions on this earth with six major religions all of these religions are interpreting the non-physical realm of all these experiences that they have had in visions or lights being visit visited or messages so throughout time it has been playing its part as of now what we're seeing is a connection between religion and science through quantum physics, through this entanglement, through being able to com communicate with, with consciousness or, or life after life or spirits. Like we know the spirits and ghosts are here. We know that extraterrestrials are visiting. Most people in religion say that you go to heaven. Well, heaven is not on earth. It's extraterrestrial. It thus meaning God is extraterrestrial. But where I'm getting at is that through this new technology, we will now have a platform to actually communicate and talk like I am talking to you now with life after life with this technology. I'm beginning to learn with all the technologies we have today that uh, there's a pixelation that uh, I think we're living in the middle of. And, I, and I've and i learned, I had an eye exam once, and I learned something about uh, the Troxler effect where, you know, we tune out things. Uh, we get used to the idea of things around us. And so there are things happening behind us that are uh, remarkable and quantum and, uh, you know, strange, but we don't, we don't see them, nor do we tune them out. And, and somebody had pointed out to me, and this is what the Troxler effect is. You put your socks on every day, you wear them, but you don't think about them once you put them on. You just realize, oh, they're on. And you don't even think anything of it. You just say, oh, okay, it's a, or your clothes for that matter. You don't think about that. You just kind of count that they're on. Um, but the, the thing about the Troxler effect is that I think it was uh, Michael Shermer, and I can't remember the, the I think it was a cur this show called Cursed Films that I was watching. And Shermer, of course, is a huge skeptic when things happen like this. He did an experiment where you're, he says, now I want you to watch the, the basketball players in white passing the basketball around and just don't take your eye off the basketball. And so you're watching it. And then he says, okay, let's play that tape again. And this time, just watch it normally. And I watched it, and there's this monkey this guy in a monkey suit walking in the middle of these guys playing basketball. And when I was watching it the first time, I didn't see it because I was paying attention to something else. And that's, that's how the brain's working is that the spirit world or the idea of a dimensional world is there. We just need the tools to open our minds to it. And, and I think that's probably, you know, what you've done. I was talking about this today and I do remember the video that you're discussing and 
what it is is you know i i've been putting this information out for eight years when i first came out with this information i was attacked heavily on facebook and other social media platforms and now what i'm seeing is more people after seven years of pushing this information more people in the disclosure community are starting to recognize that that quantum physics or quantum communication macroscopic quantum communication is now possible and most likely the the most logical way that advanced civilizations in our universe communicate long distance through quantum entanglement you could communicate anywhere in the universe you could communicate galaxy to galaxy it, it, it faster than you could snap your finger it's instant communication so when we're dealing with the communication here that uh, you know it, it, there's always been this idea that if we're communicating with extraterrestrials or communicating with ultra terrestrials we may come upon i guess a, uh, there'll be a communication gap and what that communication gap is, is like I, I remember uh, the movie where the septopods were uh, speaking to us through ink blots. And uh, that was, uh, I, can't, I think the movie, I can't remember the name of the movie right now, but uh, it was an interesting film about how difficult it would be for species of extraterrestrial, if they do make themselves known, communicating with us. How is the communication between these beings and the communication between you or the communication between us and the other side, how is that handled? Is it audible? Is it, uh, as far as how, okay. All right. Yeah. That movie was a rival. That was a very good rival, movie, yes. by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, so as of right now, the communication is in video format. So I'm able to take, um, still shots. I'm also able to capture video. So I have the video down pat when I was running the moonlight experiment where I don't need metal. I just hold the camera lens right up to the bottle and let the water pass, let, let the moonlight pass through the bottle. Then you shoot video of that. I was able to capture audio there, but the audio sounded like two lions growling. It was very different, but uh, the video I have in, in Seth Shostak of SETI Institute, I contacted them in 2015 and um, back in September of 2015, six months after I contacted them, they did come out and say that if an advanced civilization were to communicate with Earth, they would make it simple and send pictures. And that is what I'm getting as of now is images of extraterrestrials. Well, you know, when it's funny because uh, I don't know if people know this, but when SETI tries to communicate and sending out messages to uh, extraterrestrials uh, out in space, they communicate using what would be considered the vibratones and light frequencies that would be uh, actually connected to things like uh, trees uh, blowing in the wind and water falling, uh, roars of water, uh, just the... I guess you could call it the seashell sound, but in a, in a more advanced way. So it's the idea of rushing water or rushing wind, or that's the sound of the earth. And uh, so, and, and they convert it to a light frequency. So what you're doing is probably a more, would you see it as a more remedial or at least a more uh, simple form of what they would use uh, huge, you know, machines for? Yeah, well, currently the, the telescopes, the array telescopes to search distant space for messages. But you see, I'm not searching in the distant space. What I'm doing is taking incoming light. So instead of looking out, I'm actually looking within. So I'm looking in. So the messages are coming to us. So I'm also looking in a frequency that no one's ever searched for. Most sci scientists that search for extraterrestrial messages are listening with radio waves out deep in the cosmos, but none of them are, are intercepting messages here on our planet. Um, the reason for that is the technology wasn't there. And, and, and I invented this technology that I'm using, but now quantum physicists just in 2021 published a paper supporting my theories of using stars to communicate star to star communication with quantum entanglement. That was uh, Terry Ru Rudolph in London. And then in the US, you have Michael Hipke who released the paper three months after my email to him of quantum extraterrestrial intelligence and messaging. He published a scientific paper supporting my theory of quantum communication as well. So, I mean, I've been putting this information out there. No one's investigating. It's getting very frustrating for me to see other people <laughs> discussing this, this information and not even looking into my research. 
Yeah, you have to, um, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> you have to pretty much figure out uh, how to uh, get in the faces of these <coughs> scientists who already have their hand-picked uh, uh, guys coming forward and speaking of this stuff. Because, yes, I, I when I heard that you know we were going to do the show together, I was thinking, wow, there's a lot of information out there that once was poo-pooed by general science. But now with the investigation of things like panpsychism, consciousness, they're doing it because they want to find a way to give AI consciousness. And in the process, they're stumbling upon uh, multiverse, uh, upside down, dimensional beings that, you know, we once thought were extraterrestrial. And that the extraterrestrial beings that we hear about are now being theorized as being uh, synthetic technologies that have been uh, uh, shot into space by an, a, an alien race that wants to observe us. And, and so all of these new theories are coming out that are bombarding, uh, you know, I guess you could call it disclosure community, UFO community. And some of the people that are considered to be the experts in the field aren't even paying attention. They, they don't even know about these new studies they, they, because they, they already have their agendas. They already have their ideas. And they're thinking everything is black and white. But no, when you're dealing with an infinite subject such as this and you're dealing with infinite possibilities, there needs to be consideration if technologies exist to extract any of this information that exists. And so, you know, your hard work should be looked upon and understood if, if it's bringing forward proof that something is definitely out there that's looking at us and we can look back at it. Yeah, I've, I've been doing this research now for some time and what my mission as of now is to get an investigation but in doing so i'm hoping that we can have many eyes from different fields of science looking up onto what i have stumbled upon and then from there we will build the foundation as far as where we're going to be in the future in development with communication with other civilizations once we develop this technology we will then have a platform to communicate with other civilizations in our universe once we're able to communicate with other civilizations in our universe the things they are going to be able to teach us is going to expand our evolution indefinitely and as rapidly it's interesting, again, that, uh, you know, I've been thinking about you saying that for thousands of years, this is something that it has been, we have been capable of doing. And you look at, like, for example, the Oracle, uh, you remember the Oracle of Delphi, you remember the uh, Nostradamus, you remember uh, all of these other well-known uh, prophets. They used water uh, to uh, try and communicate uh, I remember uh, Nostradamus used to have a big old uh, bowl of water that he would uh, manipulate with his fingers. And then, of course, there's the Merkaba that you read about in uh, a lot of uh, old writings of the Bible. And, and the Merkaba would follow those people who were uh, well, you know, uh, were well, like seers. They, they understood it. And I think when they talk about the Merkaba, they're talking about maybe a crystalline uh, carrier of water or, or some other uh, crystalline source that would be used as a prism to filter out the light and to communicate. Because you, you just take a look at all of the oracles of time, from the Ark of the Covenant to the Merkaba to all of these uh, stories we get, and all of them deal with crystals, all of them deal with water, all of them deal with the idea that we take light, let there be light, the frequency, and this is how all things are made through light. All things are communicated through light, time. Uh, appearance, everything. There is no communication in the darkness. Only light brings forward the information you need. When they were uh, worked to Notre Dame, and this light, what what scientists are just realizing. With quantum physics, they used to say that quantum means small, where you can only entangle tiny little atoms and molecules. And whenever I would discuss macroscopic quantum communication, I've had astronomers, astrophysicists, and quantum physicists tell me I was crazy five years ago for just saying the word macroscopic and quantum together in the same sentence. But I said it then and I'll say it now. What we are observing 
is macroscopic quantum entanglement. So you're looking at photons. In, in my images, you're looking at over three inches of sunlight. In, in one centimeter of sunlight, there's hundreds of millions of photons. So in order for the objects to form in my images, you're looking at billions, billions of photons all entangled to form a coherent image. Now, macroscopic quantum technology was just recently discovered for the first time in 2021. Scientists observed it for the first time and proved that you can have quantum entanglement on a larger scale, macroscopic. Well, now we're talking even larger than that scales. So, I mean, the technology, the information has been limited on this subject matter, maybe because a lot of it is kept secret by our government because they have a lot of quantum technology right. that they're not going to share because it, it will it will well, put us in harm's way of our national security. Right. Well, it's it's growing, and uh, it, you know, a lot of it is leaking out. And of course, through science fiction and everything lately, we've been hearing about. I mean, it just seems like the, the we got a whole new world that we're dealing with with regard to uh, quantum physics, multiverse. Uh, you know, whether or not we're in different dimensions, whether or not they've tackled the idea of going into different dimensions and exploring new worlds that aren't. Uh, outside but within and that's something that has been talked about uh like you say for many years the idea that we'll explore what is within before we go outside william lawrence is with us on channel weird and uh, we're going to take a break but uh gosh fascinating discussion with william about uh quantum entanglement the idea that uh sometimes the stuff that's indistinguishable from magic certainly is uh fascinating and uh, certainly with science, we'll be able to tackle this magic and try to reveal to people just exactly what is out there. You're watching Channel Weird. I'm Clyde Lewis, and we'll be back. On the phone with me is Ronnie from GetTheTea.com. Hey, Ronnie, it is the tea that makes you go. I know this because I use it. My favorite is pomegranate. What kind of flavors are there to choose from with this wonderful tea? You can do pomegranate. You can do just the straight, which is real good. Um, and also we have a, a mint, a peppermint. People really love that one, too. And we have a couple new flavors on the way, which I will not discuss yet, but we're, they're coming. You know, a lot of people don't know that peppermint is a very, very good supplement to keep the stomach happy. It uh, relaxes the intestines, and once again, it makes you feel better because it allows them to uh, to move around and get that stuff out of you, that bad stuff out of you. Absolutely. Uh, this is a digest mover. So people have a hard time digesting stuff, or you get something stuck, or maybe you're a real heavy meat eater. The tea is wonderful. That's why it's tagline, the tea that makes you go. If I want my life to change and get the tea, where do I go to get it? Getthetea.com. That's getthetea, T-E-A, dot com. Fantastic. Ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Are you stressed? I mean, who is it? Anxiety creeping in? No, not that. Is sleep hard to attain because your brain just won't slow down? We're living in crazy times and the fear knob has been turned up. Okay, there's an answer. Take a big breath, exhale, and go log on to ancientlifeoil.com. CBD, broad and full spectrum, organic and non-GMO CBD for you to enjoy. Change your tune from fear to calm, from brain overload to clear thinking. 0 0.003 THC on full spectrum and 0% THC on broad spectrum. Competitive pricing with the best quality. Also know everything is going to get better. No worries, be happy. CBD can help calm so your nerves don't think they're a six-string electric guitar. Enjoy life, smile, and log on to ancientlifeoil.com for great CBD. That's ancientlifeoil.com. You'll be glad you did. Hey, guys. It's Clyde Lewis from Ground Zero. You know, with the rise of the cancel culture and an increase in social media censorship, we need to make a big change. So we decided to create a very unique digital platform. It's called Aftermath.media. It's an exclusive online multimedia library featuring an interactive social media section with a chat room, videos, audio clips, archive Ground Zero podcasts, documents, books, and magazines. Our news aggregator provides current news relating to many of the topics we cover. We're expanding our research and study groups as well, which presently includes Tracy Twyman, William Cooper, Mate Russell, and Jim Keith. 
Also, check out popular podcast Conspirifact with Wes and Bill. Updated apps will be available soon. The monthly subscription for Aftermath is only $10 a month. And if you sign up now for the yearly subscription, it's only $79. You want to hear the shows you love and support Great Talk Radio. Go to Aftermath.media. Again, that's Aftermath.media. It's all over the news, food shortages and scarcity in the supply chain. And the reality is nobody truly knows what might happen in the near future. Hi, I'm Clyde Lewis, and I want to let you know that it's a good idea to plan ahead so you aren't caught off guard. Nothing's more important than having enough food to eat, and we're here to help. We highly recommend My Patriot Supply, America's leading emergency preparedness company. They provide long-term emergency food that lasts up to 25 years in storage. When grocery stores run empty or disasters strike, their foods will be there when you need them most. Act now and secure at least a four-week emergency food kit full of tasty meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. They have dozens of emergency food storage kits to choose from, along with a variety of other survival products. If the government tells you not to go out, you can have the peace of mind that comes from being prepared. After you order from My Patriot Supply, your food will arrive discreetly at your doorstep. Prepare today, because time is short. Go to preparewithgroundzero.com. That's preparewithgroundzero.com. William Lawrence is with us today on Channel Weird. I'm Clyde Lewis. And what a fascinating topic we're discussing, you know, quantum entanglement, the idea of communication with extraterrestrials or multi uh, ultra terrestrials or whatever beings are out there using uh, everything from star to star quantum communication to, oh my gosh, I mean, there's so many things we've had in, in the last segment that's uh, just really, uh, I, I can't go into more detail about it because it's so complicated, but Here's the thing. There have been, I think, uh, what, Stephen Hawking and several others have stated that perhaps it's dangerous for us to try and communicate with these beings, that maybe we will somehow uh, communicate with somebody or some group that's hostile. Uh, there was a story, I think it was released recently, saying that they've determined that maybe there are hostile entities out there. And and I get warnings all the time that whenever you do a seance or whenever you do something like that, you're probably tinkering with the wrong uh, area or you're using the wrong area code, like 666 or whatever, to try and communicate with your being. Tell me about that. Tell me about uh, the warnings that physicists like Stephen Hawking have talked about and others and, and whether or not there's any, um, I guess you could say, uh, validity to the idea that maybe we're walking around in the wrong neighborhood. Well, apparently, uh, it looks as though that we're having a technical difficulty. We're going to try and get him back. But in the meantime, it's uh, interesting to note that uh, you've been looking over time at the idea that extraterrestrial messages, past and present, have, as, as William had said, they've impressed upon prophets and they've impressed upon all sorts of mystics. And there's got to be something to all this. We got you back, William? It looks like we got you back. Yeah. They just reloaded yeah. the page oh, for good. some reason. Well, that, that's, that's great. Uh, so let's go back to that question I asked before. Just the idea that uh, people like Stephen Hawking and others have said, you know, we may be walking around the wrong neighborhood when we're doing this type of experimentation. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so I, I think at this point it's more dangerous for not to communicate with other civilizations due to the fact that we are harming our environment just by not using these advanced technologies that we will be able to discover and get from these other civilizations. As for are there evil entities on Earth? Yes, I've had a haunting where I was haunted by an evil spirit in a house where it would hold me down to the bed. It did that for three weeks. And then on the fourth week, it actually showed itself to me. It was um, a gray figure, solid. You couldn't see through him, very bony-like. He had his arms up like this, and he was just screaming at the top of his lungs. But all you saw was a black hole where his mouth should be, and his eyes were just just black and he wanted me out i couldn't hear him but i saw him so so there is evil entity there are evil things as far as what we are communicating with after earth at this time 
everything I've seen has been positive. Um, they want to communicate. They want to show themselves. They want to talk to us. But in order for us to talk to them back, we need to develop this technology, which I, I am not capable of developing. So what would be the, I guess, the next step here? I mean, you've got the basics. What's the next step? And can people like me or others uh, experience the same thing? Now, we can run the experiment on, on site, bentlights.com, the very first early publication on how to bend. Uh, you could run the moonlight experiment, which is very simple, and, and you will pick up some type of an anomaly, I'm sure, or certain. The sunlight experiment is a little more complicated. However, I have had people around the globe run the experiment and were able to to collect unexplained anomalies not as detailed as some of the ones that came through with my photographs so we understand the frequency now other people could continue to gather physical evidence similar to what i have already gathered we can do that i can do that i went out and ran the experiment for one day last year in may or it might have been the year before and i collected more ex evidence. I collected a bald man with a beard. He was in two of the photographs. And then I collected one of the advanced reptiles again. So, I mean, they're there. They, they want to communicate now, developing the technology. I, I can only see bits and pieces. So they're able to give me information, but it's very limited. If we had scientists investigate this, they could reverse engineer what the frequency, what I discovered, they could develop it in their lab, and we would have a video stream where we would be able to have video conference calls with these other intelligent species in our universe, which could be us after Earth. Us after Earth, meaning what? That, the, that we're, we're contacting the future or we're contacting another parallel universe or what, what are you saying here well just the existence of ghosts take that for example we know that go here there's plenty of physical evidence of, of spirits captured just the physical existence of an intelligent species of, of light a ghost a spirit is proof that there is life after life where our consciousness our memories our thoughts everything is transferred from 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 this body to something else, but we don't know what the something else is, and that's why there's so much mystery. What I believe that I'm seeing and documenting for the first time is observation of, of this realm of spirits using a communication frequency. So now that we're able to, to see the frequency, we can communicate with them, we can ask them questions as far as who they are, what they are, and if they are us after earth i mean they could be fully evolved a billion years ahead of us we could have signed up to come down to earth we could have had our consciousness beam down to earth at the moment of inception and we could live out our hundred years and after that hundred years we go back but when we go back that hundred years was only a day we don't know because in the quantum realm what i'm, I'm seeing is that time doesn't exist you can't calculate time when you can travel anywhere in the universe in this in a matter of seconds right goes to show you that light also is a basis of time that, you know, if you're going faster than light or if you're moving, uh, particularly that you, you, you attempt to beat it. Okay. So the communication is happening. What is the overall perspective you get from the communication that you receive? As far as now, one of the most important messages was Galileo's spyglass. There was an alien being riding a beam of light. You see the rainbow coming through the image, and then you see Galileo's spyglass on the right-hand side. When compared to a famous painting of Galileo, it was almost spot on to the window covering. There was something in the window of this famous painting, and it was like looking in, and his telescope was pointed out. So, I mean, that was one of the, the physical objects. Like, they're saying, all right, so now you're looking out, and we can see in. So they're looking in. Um, as far as all the other communication, is just them. It's them appearing, just showing up. So, the, like I said, there was the human spirit or consciousness. It looks like a ghost. There's advanced reptiles that look like turtles, but like fully evolved, like a billion years in the future with these big gold reflective eyes and their brown skin. And the color brown is not even in the light spectrum, but somehow it's appearing in my photographs. And then there's physical humans. I found a bald man in the very beginning, and then years later, that same it could be the same bald man had a beard. 
And um, I didn't even know hair was possible because at this time I haven't even documented hair on any of these subjects. But then two years ago, I did document hair for the first time. And that was the beard or was, was it? That was the bearded man. Yeah. I've seen yeah. long hair on anybody. As of now, everyone's always bald. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you have any pictures you can hold up to the camera and show us? Or is that something that uh, would be difficult to get? Yeah, I have a few here. I'm not sure how my hat is working, but uh, this would be the you human soul. Well, I'm sure that maybe if you hold it up, but maybe we can see some <sighs> interesting uh, stuff here because I, uh, I I didn't want to have to cut away and ask you, but I was thinking, gosh, if you got the stuff available, I'd love to see some of it, actually. So here you'll see the human soul. You have the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the shoulder blades. Oh, my gosh. That's and then, definitely got definition right there. Something looking in. Yeah. And, and then again, I mean, it looks like a bald figure. It's a bald figure, correct? Yeah. Here's the advanced reptile with the gold reflective eyes. You'll see the two nostril holes and an upside down mouth. Right. And, and his leathery skin. Yeah. And here is the same, same one captured a year later. He has amazing. like a, a gold reflective eye. That gold reflective eye I've noticed on all the, the reptile species that appear. And um, here's Galileo's wow. Galileo spyglass with the alien being with the rainbow Superman cape. Wow. And he's just looking through the rear end of an old telescope. And you could even see the rainbow and the, the, the prism of, of light. And it's just that object should not be forming right. in just water and sunlight. That water, one photo is sunlight. very clear. I mean, the, 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 you know, some of them you could look at, and I'm sure somebody will write it off as probably pareidolia, but that other one is very clear as to what it is. And here, Seriously. you have here you have three. You have a bald man, you have a tall woman or man with a cape, and then you have a small alien being on the left. Yeah. Called. So, but, but yeah, this was the photo that actually started it all. Uh, this wow. was the very I, first thing I've seen. Hold still right there. Hold it where you're holding it. Oh my gosh. Okay. You, you just don't pull away yet. I was like, I was like looking at that and I could see the three beings. Uh, oh, the three. Yeah. The three. Hold that up again. That was like, you, you had it and then you moved it. And then, uh, oh my gosh, we have a delay here, so it's like... You know, I'm holding it for you right there, but oh, you got the three people just standing there. Yeah. Just Hold like on. looking in. Hold it right there, and they're looking right in on you. You notice that? There's an alien being standing there on the right. There's a figure standing there in the middle, and then there's another figure on the left. And is that another reptilian being? Uh, yeah, so here you'll have one reptile, advanced reptile, alien-like, next to what appears to be two human physical not not non-physical so some are ghosts some are physical the wow. reptiles are physical the humans are physical they all look tangible to me I mean, yeah I, you know, I mean maybe the one uh on the far um, one on the left maybe would look a little cloudy but i'm just saying you know you can see definition in those uh extraterrestrial beings that you're showing us right now and this was the very first photo that started it all. If I didn't find this photo that I'm showing you now, I would not be where I'm at. And this is what I believe to be consciousness. This is the human soul outside of the physical body trying to communicate with us crazy humans. That's just amazing. So, okay, so you show these experiments. You've been showing these experiments to what, certain scientists? Oh, All no, right. I have sent thousands of emails. I mean, in the very beginning, I sent it to Seth Shostak, said he the Institute, the United King or the United Nations. I followed protocol for discovering extraterrestrial messages. I, I sent everyone that I could send this information to. And as far as of now, not a single investigation has went into my my discovery. You but should I showed mean, Avi Loeb. I'm sure that he'd be interested in this because Avi Loeb has been uh for me, I mean, an inspiration because he certainly doubles down on his uh investigations into extraterrestrial beings communication and even you know exo archaeology which is something that he uh talks about and uh, he and i both agree that uh, there seems to be a bracewell type of probe situation going on where they are observing us and uh there is they're closer than we think they are i know a lot of people are saying things like well why would they come light years you know blah, blah, blah. they're not coming light years they're they're nearby in like the Jovian system. They're nearby in a different para parallel universe. I mean, 
they, they we don't see them because we've tuned them out. We've they've been around us for as long as they have, and we've tuned them out. And so it takes people like you to go in and say, okay, well, I've got a way to filter light and to project something that is right there in the light spectrum that you can't see with your own eye, but I can I can basically use an experiment to show you that there you have it. There's three beings standing there in that picture. And what baffles me, you know, I, I, I've been running this experiment for so long. I put this information out there and the information is there, yet it hasn't been an investigation, which really baffles me. But you got other people in the community now starting to discuss quantum information. So I would hope that in the near future that there will be an investigation of this. And when I say investigation, I mean a scientific investigation from all fields of science, paranormal, extraterrestrial, because for all we know, and this goes on to what you were saying, where are they? We know they're here. Where are they? Are they some, somewhere in the universe? For all we know, stars could be a living entity. And our ghosts is, is proof of that. Energy is alive. So for all we know, what we look at to the sun, it, it could be a whole dimension of intelligent species all existing and it, right there. It but just seems like everything, it seems like everything these days about electromagnetism. And it's why I always say to myself, well, if it's all about electromagnetism and the electric universe, why did everybody just reject Vilikovsky when he talked about this? Because it just seems to me that electric current, the power of God is electricity. The power of God is light. The power of extraterrestrials is light and electricity. And, of course, the ability to uh, fire a quark cannon in, in Switzerland and able to open up portals and open up uh, areas of the universe from Earth. I mean, we have something, the power of a pulsar that's firing every time and breaking up particles. And this opens up portals. And, and here you have something simple that can open up a portal just by using light. And that's exactly what they're doing. They, what, they want to light particles slamming together to give us the big bang image it's it's amazing what you've what you've done with this uh, william lawrence is with us on channel weird today and we are so glad to have him on those pictures were fascinating and i think that a lot of people are going to talk about this right here on channel weird we're going to return more with uh, william lawrence and uh, get a wrap up here uh, right here on channel we'll receive we'll see you on the other side Right now, the world could be more chaotic. History shows us what gold does when the world goes crazy. It goes up in value. Right now, we're in unprecedented times. The pandemic, the war in Ukraine, the devaluation of the U.S. dollar. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against the hyperinflation that's happening right now. So what can you do to protect yourself? This is what you do. Call my friend, Alan Johnson, at United Gold Group. He's dedicated to helping people secure their retirement income. He'll help you with gold, silver, and other precious metals and show you how to set up your own self-directed IRA. Safe and secure, United Gold Group makes gold ownership easy and affordable. There couldn't be a better time. Call now and get a Silver American Eagle proof set with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. Again, that's 800-753-8534 or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. Hey guys, it's Clyde Lewis from Ground Zero. You know, with the rise of the cancel culture and an increase in social media censorship, we need to make a big change. So we decided to create a very unique digital platform. It's called Aftermath.media. It's an exclusive online multimedia library featuring an interactive social media section with a chat room, videos, audio clips, archive Ground Zero podcasts, documents, books, and magazines. Our news aggregator provides current news relating to many of the topics we cover. We're expanding our research and study groups as well, which presently includes Tracy Twyman, William Cooper, Mae Brussel, and Jim Keith. Also, check out popular podcast Conspirifact with Wes and Bill. Updated apps will be available soon. The monthly subscription for Aftermath is only $10 a month, and if you sign up now for the yearly subscription, it's only $79. You want to hear the shows you love and support Great Talk Radio. Go to Aftermath.media. Again, that's Aftermath.media. AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com. 
Are you stressed? I mean, who is it? Anxiety creeping in? No, not that. Is sleep hard to attain because your brain just won't slow down? We're living in crazy times and the fear knob has been turned up. Okay, there's an answer. Take a big breath, exhale, and go log on to ancientlifeoil.com. CBD, broad and full spectrum, organic and non-GMO CBD for you to enjoy. Change your tune from fear to calm, from brain overload to clear thinking. 0.003 THC on full spectrum and 0% THC on broad spectrum. Competitive pricing with the best quality. Also know everything is going to get better. No worries. Be happy. CBD can help calm so your nerves don't think they're a six-string electric guitar. Enjoy life, smile, and log on to ancientlifeoil.com for great CBD. That's ancientlifeoil.com. You'll be glad you did. William Lawrence is with us right here on Channel Weird. And man, what a show this has been, especially with the visual that we're seeing with the experiments that he has uh, conducted, uh, opening up uh, parallel universes, talking or at least showing us that extraterrestrials are in other worlds or ultra-terrestrials are in other worlds. Ghosts, ghosts in the machine, quantum entanglement, spooky actions at a distance. That's what Einstein called it. And he certainly is bending the light to give us those spooky uh, actions they are spooky and in and, and other in and, and other ways they're very enlightening they give us a, an indication that there is something out there that certainly if we have the right kind of tools to bend light we can find uh something that is among us now are you have more pictures available right that are on your website yeah on my website benlights.com if you were to do the publications there is a full article just on the evidence alone there's also supporting articles of uh, scientific pages just recently been published in 2021 um actually that support my discovery as 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 far as the articles that i publish you also have articles that discuss the the link the quantum entanglement link between telepathy and how we're able to to have neurons of our brains fire with these photons and they're able to entangle information um also with the technology that i discovered to communicate we will be able to reverse engineer the communication side of the frequency we will be able to use it as energy so in the future we will be able to macroscopically quantum entangle electricity electrons and so long as you have a proper device that processes it you could have any device not have to use a battery ever again it would actually wirelessly transmit energy from our star down to earth i want to say something that i don't know if this applies but i remember back when i was first reading about the big bang and i was reading about uh, the idea that uh is there any proof or is there anything we can see or anything that we can uh look to uh and uh, there was a um uh, an article that I read about ITC, which is uh, they what they call it, uh, where they use transmitters and things to contact the dead. Um, it's like EVP, but EVP comes through ITC using technical means to basically contact these beings. And uh, one of the things that they talked about was that back in the day, now that we have digital TV, we don't see this anymore. But back in the day when we had analog TV, you were able to go to a channel that was nothing was broadcast on that channel and you'd see what is called snow or you'd see uh, it's kind of like fuzz, you know, going and what that is, is that's the big bang. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing the frequency of particles. You're seeing particles just messing around in dead air. And those particles they used to use. Uh, and, and that's why Spielberg, when he did um, poltergeist, they had the girl looking at the screen with the fuzz like that, because it was said that if you gazed into that long enough, you'd start to see images. And these images would be passing through like ghosts. And either it was a pareidolia experiment or it was something where, yes, we see if you watch the snow or if you watch the fuzz long enough, you would see these information, this information going through. And this is what I was thinking. If you could get an analog TV again and just turn it on and pick up that static, I can imagine now that nobody, you know, now that we only use digital, that something is being communicated on those channels and that you could use that as well to try and 
give proof that something is out there in the mix of that frequency that, you know, they were telling you that what you're seeing when you turn on the, that, that snow is you're seeing remnants of the big bang, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, and the big bang is also a theory. I mean, that's the leading theory of how the universe was created, but now you have to remember that's also a theory that can be proved or disproved in the future. Once we have more, um, technological advancement, as far as the analog, the digital camera wasn't invented until 1975. And when we're discussing Notre Dame or, or John Dee and Edward Kelly, or even ITC, that, that uses digital camera photography as well. Now, um, it was invented in 1975. The, the particular experiment that I'm running is with a 720p webcam, which wasn't invented until 2000s. So, I mean, the technology wasn't there to discover what I discovered until after the 90s. And then in finding what I discovered, I realized, you know, the United States government has been using the visible light spectrum to communicate since 1979. They too had retro reflectors and satellites in space that would receive sunlight. It would then digitally input electric information into the sunlight. They would then beam that light down from space to a receiving station on earth, which would, it, the, the signal by time it reached Earth was like seven miles wide. But then the receiving station grabbed that light and it processed it back into information. So the technology was developed by the United States government to use sunlight to send information. Now, I am claiming that I have discovered quantum entangled extraterrestrial messages using light photons with pareidolia. Pareidolia does describe physical objects like trees or shapes in the clouds or anything such as that. But with, with the objects forming in the light, we know that light has been scientifically proven to store and send information. We know that photons can be quantum entangled. And now we have unexplained anomalies appearing in the light. This is why I say we need an investigation. Well, your, your work is similar to what I have read before that scientists, again, we go back to crystals and crystalline uh, sources for communication and for bending light into fine entities or other things. I was reading a scientific paper a while ago that said that crystals that they have found in volcanic areas had recorded uh, dinosaur uh, screams or dinosaur uh, vocal uh, vocalizations, and that they were able to extract from crystals vocalizations from dinosaurs. And uh, they were saying that if they could advance it even more, they'd probably be able to extract from those crystals images of dinosaurs because they've been around so long and they've absorbed all that light and all that. I mean, that's that's all we are is we're 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 light light casts upon us and gives us the image. If we didn't have the light particles, if we didn't have the quantum, uh, you know, what we call the tachyon that holds us together, we wouldn't be seen. We need light. Light is the basic thing. Let there be light was a basic thing. A frequency was a basic thing, and also um, sound. Sound and light were the very things that created this planet. Sound and light were the very things that created the universe. So, I mean, this is basic, but still fascinating. It is, and it baffles me that, you know, it's been eight years now, and I'll say it again, not a single investigation into to the my claims, my methods, anything that has to do with this discovery. So it maybe is very simple. baffling. Maybe, but it, do you think that maybe they see it as scrying? I mean, scrying has always been something that has been controversial and science doesn't appreciate scrying, but you know, scrying works. I've, I've scried, uh, I've uh, done scrying on the radio frequencies and have picked up ghosts before I picked up communications. We used to have a, a, a contraption called the black cube that would, that would actually it would, it would scry along the lower frequencies of cell phones. And what you would get is you would get just like this bits and pieces of communication like you would if it was an EVP box or something. But it's a lot more uh, complicated than that because it was a lower frequency and it was like it was communicating with us through the ether. And it was an amazing thing. We did it for a while. It was an amazing thing and it worked. And uh, it, it changed my mind about sound and light as how it could be very powerful in creating a communication uh, back and forth between uh, humans and ultra-terrestrials or ghosts or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, it's about 
putting the pieces together, I've been able to just experiment, which is very similar to scrying. It's a very similar technique, it, it, but my technique is a little different. You know, I, I just found the sweet spot. I found the focal point to focal on the frequency. But, but the frequency has always been there, and people have always picked up on it. I just found a way to, to visualize it or observe it for the first time. And it's just like if I were looking under a microscope and I'm seeing cell biology for the first time and I'm going to take a, a, a piece of paper and draw out what I'm seeing. And then once I draw out what I'm seeing, I'm going to hand this to scientists that are nearby. And when they see that, they're going to look at it and be like, what is this? This isn't something we've ever seen. That doesn't exist. So they deny what they haven't seen, but yet it's there. Oh uh, yeah, I mean they'll look right at something. I'll tell you, I don't see this or I don't hear this, and yet, it, it, like for example, I have a a, a colleague who does uh, a friend of mine who does uh, reverse speech. His name's David Oates, and he has got this amazing way of taking communication, reversing it, and and you hear what he claims are the inner thoughts of human beings, the subconscious, unconscious mind, basically speaking through reverse speech. Now he's been doing this for years, and there are people who have even the CIA has said that there's some validity to it. But the science has taken a hard, uh, a hard. Uh, uh, it's just hard bringing it up because I think a lot of scientists actually would dismiss it as scrying. I think they say, "Well, you know, it's scrying. It's an ancient art." But there, but it's it's a, if scrying works, if it's if it's being yeah. done and, and it's working, then have science figure out how scrying works rather than dismissing it. And that is what's happening now with Michael Hipke, who is a quantum physicist here in the U.S. I sent him an email last year, May, May 7th, and then three months later, he publishes a draft of exactly what I sent him in the email. And, and it's all about quantum communication. So it's like I'm reaching the right people who are in a position to, to really shine some light on this topic. But instead of investigating my work, Instead, they're just taking it and then publishing it as their own. This is what's happening right now. Michael Hipkin in the U.S. You patent it? Can you patent it? All, it? You can't. I mean, you could patent the device, but you I'm should. not patenting nothing. I'm putting this information to the public for free. So this information and knowledge is more valuable and it needs to be in the hands of the public, but it can't be manipulated. There's other people like Andrew Collins in the U.K., the United Kingdom right now. He just published a book with all my theories in it. Seven of my theories. And what I now is talking about quantum entanglement, macroscopic, the link between telepathy. He's talking about everything that's on my website, bentlights.com, which has been there for eight years. So, I mean, I'm up against a wall. I'm contacting the right people. Andrew Collins also declined to investigate my, even though he's publishing a book with all of my theories. So like I said before, I'm a little frustrated, but I mean, I'm pushing forward. I'm trying to get this right. information to the public, and this information should be free. Well, yeah, I would agree it should be free. And I don't think that there's any money usually in new discoveries, but I would say that if you have a way to communicate, maybe you should patent that way. That way you can say that you have your name on it, you've laid claim to it. Not that you're making money off of it, but just the idea that ideas – and new discoveries have to go to and give credit to those who discover them. And if you're having that kind of frustration, there may be uh, some ways you can protect yourself from people taking that information and exploiting it and, and taking away uh, your, uh, your genius. And I think that's something that needs to be thought about. I mean, sometimes you do have to uh, put up some protections, uh, especially with something this, this amazing, I think. Yeah, and at this point, my only goal is investigation. So that's all I'm asking for is an investigation, an outside investigation to be established. If that's established, then they're going to prove. And and like I said, this information, we're going to be communicating with other civilizations. We're going to be able to learn knowledge that we have never dreamed about. It is going to advance our civilization into the next step. I mean, we're going to right. be able to have free wireless technologies. Like it, It's endless. So right. the the sooner we investigate, the sooner we can connect. Before we go, it's almost, we're almost out of time. Hold up that picture again of those three entities. Hold it in front of the camera so people can see that this is an amazing thing. Because those three entities that are standing there, I was completely blown away by what I was seeing. So if you could just hold that up again in front of the camera. Let's see if we can. I'm, I'm going to look at the screen again. He's going to pull it up. 
And there we go. You look at those three beings looking down at you or looking out and you see them standing there looking back. That's some amazing stuff, William. It really is. Thank you for sharing that with us. That, ah, look at that. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. And if anyone would like to, to, to visit my websites.com, check me out on Facebook. All the latest information is there. This is a developing story. We got people around the world now discussing quantum entanglement. And, and those people know that I'm aware that I know what they're doing. So Bent I'm not, I mean, it is .com, right. It's crazy right now, but I'm open for an investigation in the near future. Bentlights.com. It's William Lawrence with us on Channel Weird today. I am blown away. I'm sure we're going to talk again, maybe on Ground Zero, uh, my radio show. We would love to talk to you then about some of the other discoveries. But we needed the visual. We really needed the visual to hit this home and to, uh, to make it happen today on Channel Weird. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, remember, Channel Weird is now going to be airing again at 7 p.m. on Saturdays and 7 p.m. on Sundays. So we'll see you soon. Take care.